teaching skills and language awareness. Teaching vocabulary one, some practical aspects. To start with, on the first page of your task sheet, there are some questions for you and your partner or group to discuss. Number one, why is Lexus often taught before a reading, listening, speaking, or writing task? Two, in what type of lessons is it essential that the students know the pronunciation of the language? Three, which is more effective, for the teacher to define a lexical item or to elicit it from the students, and why? And four, what are the stages in teaching new Lexus? For question four, there are eight stages. Consider the staging you've looked at for other types of lessons and think about what we normally start with and what we normally finish with. So you probably start it with set context and create motivation and ended with error correction. Now think about what goes in between. Consider where drilling fits in and time for sufficient language use. Pause the video and try answering these questions with your partner or group now. Why is Lexus often taught before a reading, listening, speaking or writing task? This is so students can attend to meaning in the text. It's easier for them to comprehend what they are reading or listening to if they're not tripping over unfamiliar words. And to use them in a speaking or writing task, they need to know what they mean and how to use them. It's often difficult to work out meanings of words from context, so we can give the students what we call a pre-teaching Lexus task, where they're introduced to key items of vocabulary from the reading or listening that they will need to know, in order to be able to get the gist of what they're listening to or reading as a whole. So therefore, top-down skills can be used, so they can get the overall picture if they have a better understanding of the meanings which the Lexus contribute to. In what types of lessons is it important that students know the pronunciation of the language? Generally, in listening, speaking, Lexus, grammar and function lessons. In listening, they should know how to recognize the Lexus when they hear it. Speaking, grammar and functions, so they are producing it correctly. Why is it not necessary in reading? Because only visual recognition is needed. Although you're not restricted from teaching the pronunciation, it's just not as vital. Which is more effective? To define a lexical item or to elicit it and why? Well, you've probably said eliciting. And the reason for this? There is higher processing and greater involvement on the part of the learners. And finally, what are the stages in teaching new Lexus? We'll actually talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. And you can also refer to your course handbook. So first of all, let's think about what it means to know a word. Learners need to recognize and understand the word or phrase when they hear it or see it written. If they want to use the word or phrase, they need to be able to remember and recall it. They need to be able to use it with the correct meaning and to use it in the right situation. Some words have positive or negative associations. For example, if we're talking about someone Slim is usually positive, while skinny is negative. Learners need to know which other words they can use it with. For example, we say strong wind, but not strong rain. Heavy rain is better, because it's a more often used and natural collocation. 
they need to be able to use it grammatically correctly in a sentence. Is it a verb, a noun, an adjective, or an adverb? Young learners will pick this up by learning language chunks. To say the word, they need to be able to pronounce it correctly. And in writing, they need to learn how to spell it correctly. So just a quick aside here. Trainees often ask the difference between vocabulary and lexis. We tend to use the term vocabulary when we're referring to a collection of words in a particular field, or of the words known and available to a person, or words prepared for a specific purpose, often for learning, which is why you might hear her vocabulary in French is quite extensive, or legal vocabulary, or vocabulary words for next week's quiz, and the vocabulary you need to understand this article. Whereas Lexis refers to the set of all words and phrases in a language. So here are the seven stages in learning vocabulary. And note, this is not the lesson staging. We'll come to that later. This is an effective order of learning new words, and we'll look at each one in turn. So learners need to meet the new words in a familiar context so that they can understand the meaning. This means linking the words to a familiar situation, topic or story. The context helps to create the connections between the words. To help learners understand the meaning, you can use digital media, so video, software, interactive whiteboard, you can use pictures and objects, gestures and actions, or explanations, synonyms, antonyms, or direct translation. So just a quick review on elicitation techniques, and you might remember this from the last input. We can use simple concept check questions to make sure the students have understood the right meaning of a particular word. You can make them simple or challenging, depending on your learners. So, some examples. If you wanted to elicit their comprehension of the word elephant, you could ask WH questions. What colour is an elephant? Yes or no questions. Is this an elephant? Can elephants climb trees? Either or questions. Is this an elephant or a kangaroo? Etc. Now, look at page two of your task sheet at question B. Look at these ways of clarifying meaning and decide with your partner or group how you would teach the Lexus in that task in the most efficient, effective way. Now, please be aware that while these techniques are engaging, they can become teacher-centered and time-consuming. Let's look at the first example. Students might need to know the word pumpkin. Maybe they'll be doing a task or a project on Halloween. What are some ways this word could be clarified? Well, there's always realia, if you happen to have a pumpkin in the classroom. Or you could draw it, define it, although as mentioned, this is rather teacher-centered, ask a WH question, or show a flashcard. Do this with your partner or group now and discuss what methods would be good to clarify these items. Pause the video and do this now. You'll see our suggested answers on page 4 of the task sheet. Do you want your learners to be familiar with both the spoken and written forms of the word? This varies depending on the age of the learners and the set of vocabulary you are teaching. The spoken form means how it sounds and how it's said. You model the word by saying it clearly and naturally. Have the learners listen and repeat. Drill the words in phrases and sentences. Use songs and stories where learners hear and say the words. The written form means spelling the item and knowing how to use it in a sentence. 
write or display the word on the board or in a story, have learners copy or trace the vocabulary, include words that go together like a tall girl, and include grammatical features such as one foot, two feet. Another review, but this time on drilling. To make this fun and effective, you can do the following. Ensure the meaning of the vocabulary is clarified before you drill it. Provide a clear and natural model. And best to say something two to three times so learners can listen to how it's said by you. Drill chorally and then individually. Add some kind of persona, emotion and facial expressions. Use hand and arm movements for intonation and stress and have students copy them. Use your fingers for contractions and linking. Remember to include substitution drilling and you can try some back chaining as well. Thinking about schemata is very important when learning vocabulary. Words are connected in patterns. These patterns create networks of connections in the brain. And these networks of connections is called schemata. It's important to teach vocabulary in a way that helps learners make these connections, what we call activating their schemata. So how are words connected? Connections can be horizontal or vertical. Younger children are more horizontal. They relate words to each other through theme. For example, dog, bark, play. Whereas older children are more vertical. They're able to categorize and sort words into groups and pyramids. For example, animal, dog, poodle. Depending on the age of the learner, consider how you can best help them form these connections and categorizations, whether vertically or horizontally. Next, practicing and memorizing the words. For young learners, this is best done through interactive activities, such as memory games and songs, TPR and drama activities, craft activities, word puzzles, grouping and sorting activities, and activities involving the five senses. Whereas more mature learners may benefit more from the activities on the right, such as spoken activities, discussions, guessing games, written activities, frequent reviews and short quizzes. There are various ways you can help your learners in consolidating vocabulary. Create networks of meaning around that vocabulary item. What lexical set is it in? If the word is taxi, it's part of a lexical set of public transport vehicles in the wider lexical field of transport. Hold to parts. A taxi has four wheels, a steering wheel, but also a meter and a light. Word hierarchies are useful for older learners who think vertically. A poodle comes under dog, comes under pet, comes under animal. It's useful to think of a word's synonyms and antonyms in order to consolidate their meanings as well. So knowing words like cool and cold, and warm and hot help establish a relationship in the learner's mind as to the meanings. There are many different ways of recording vocabulary. These records can help your learners remember and review the words. For younger learners you can use vocabulary posters and wall displays. The children can, for example, label a zoo or parts of the body. You can ask them to create their own vocabulary picture cards and they can review these regularly. For older learners, you can also use mind maps, which are especially helpful to see connections between words. Vocabulary cards, which can include, for example, a definition, an example sentence, the part of speech, etc. Vocabulary notebooks, organized by date, topic or alphabetically. 
and a useful thing to have as a constant is to keep a special section of the board for the vocabulary you expect learners to record and remember. Recycling. Children learn words quickly and then often forget them quickly. We need to help them understand and remember the words better. By practicing the vocabulary again in different activities, we can help make it stick. There are lots of activities for recycling vocabulary. You can play different games using the same vocab so the learners meet the words again and again in different contexts. Personalized activities make language more meaningful and memorable. Let learners use the words to talk about their own family, a favorite toy, a shop they like, or what happens in their lives. Also include activities for different multiple intelligences. For a simple test, you can get students to color pictures of the things they can name. Playing vocabulary games with your learners can help recycle vocabulary they've learned. Here's a list of some common games used in the classroom. If you're not sure of what they are, you could make a note of these and look them up on the internet. Now refer to part C on your task sheet. This is a discussion task with your group or partner which relates to 5. Recording vocabulary and 6. Recycling. It looks at techniques for helping learners remember vocabulary items. Pause the video and discuss this now. Learners need to develop strategies for guessing new words, recording them, and memorizing them. They can use clues in the text to predict and guess a word's meaning. They can keep a vocabulary book in which to record new words and their meanings. They can memorize several new words and self-test at a later stage to see if they can remember them. They can use a dictionary and they can practice with a friend. Look at part D of your task sheet. This is an exercise on working out meaning from context. You might already know what the underlined words mean, but if you're not sure, have a guess. Then check in a dictionary to see how close you were. Pause the video and do this now. So let's look at the four sentences together. The thief attacked him with a bodkin. You probably assumed that a bodkin was maybe some kind of weapon. Something sharp or heavy maybe because of the word attacked. Pumpernickel consists of flour, water and yeast. Well, the word consists signals definition. So whatever flour, water and yeast makes, pumpernickel's probably going to be some kind of bread. He was a misanthrope, so the children's lives were a misery. The word so indicates result. So what kind of person would make children's lives a misery? Probably someone very unpleasant, like a person who doesn't like people. You might also have worked out the meaning by knowing some of the etymology of the word. In his sleep, he saw a succubus and woke frightened. Well, you could use context and logic here again. Maybe something frightening you'd see in your sleep, like a demon or a monster. Now notice that for some words, you can only guess at a general meaning and not be able to work out the exact meaning. That's okay. We would prefer our learners to have a guess and use these techniques and then check later, then always be told the definitions. Working out meaning from context is a good skill to practice and is much more student-centered. Now try task E on your task sheet, which is to label the appropriate parts of a dictionary entry. It's important our learners understand what the different parts of the definition refer to. Pause the video and do this now.
And here are the answers. Just a quick note here. If you look at the part of the definition where it says takes an object, you can see the arrow pointing to the letter T. Quickly discuss with your partner what that T stands for. Pause the video and do this now. The answer is T stands for transitive verb, which is a verb which takes an object. So earlier, we asked you to see if you could think of what the stages of a Lexis lesson might be for adults. How much of what you wrote matched the recommended staging? This is in your course handbook as well. And here are the basic stages for a Lexis lesson for young learners, as you can see much shorter. So, in this input, you've focused on some ways to teach Lexis and the ways which are more effective because they encourage higher processing and greater involvement from our learners. You've looked at ways of clarifying meanings of new Lexis, some learner strategies for learning new Lexis, and the staging for Lexis lessons for adults and young learners. Moving forward, Think about how you might teach or clarify vocabulary in your next lesson. Use the information in this input and plan carefully. You're going to discuss this input in the next OT. Organize your notes, highlight the key information, concepts and terms you've learned. Prepare any questions or comments that you want to raise with the group. And if you were able to incorporate any ideas with regards to vocabulary in your teaching, make some notes of any insights you want to share. Thanks for watching and see you next Wednesday.